Today I'm going to show you five tips and tricks on how to get a professional, good quality edge from any fixed angle system. Doesn't matter which fixed angle system you're using, and a lot of these things will bleed over to freehand. In this video, I'm going to assume that you already know the basics. If not, I have many videos teaching the basics, even on this system. So if you're, if you're a very beginner, then you might want to learn how to use a fixed angle system first. This is going to be for people that already know the basics. So before we get into the first tip, I'm using an aftermarket stone holder attachment for the WorkSharp Professional Knife Sharpening System. So if you have one of these and you want to get a stone holder that makes it to where you can use any stones you want, the Neve stones, the Toma stones, whatever stones, then definitely get one of these because the stone holder that comes with the WorkSharp Professional Knife Sharpening System only holds their stones. So you can only replace the stones with their stones when you're using this. But if you get this one, then you can use any stone. I will link this down in the description for you guys with a discount code. Since we're using the aftermarket stone holder attachment, I'm going to be sharpening with my Venise stones. Now, the first tip is understanding the scratch pattern. By understanding the scratch pattern, you're going to understand what you're trying to accomplish. Therefore, you'll be able to get to that result much easier because you know what it's supposed to look like in the end before you even start. So we're going to take a knife edge that's already done and that is good quality we're going to show it under a microscope so you can see what the end result will look like so you can see the top of the bevel here this is the apex right here you can see the scratches running at an angle from heel to the tip you can see we can stretch this out over to the tip that's my finger right there you can see the tips hit really nicely all the scratches are running at an angle nice and consistent now, these scratches are micro serrations at the apex, just like a saw blade. So when you are applying this edge and sharpening, this is what your result, you're trying to make sure the scratch pattern is nice and consistent at an angle leading to these micro serrations at the apex so that all the micro serrations are running one direction, just like a saw blade, which is the direction you cut with. Now, here's an example where the tip is not all the way hit. You can see the scratch pattern is really consistent, but the tip is not all the way hit, so it needed to be worked on a little bit better. Same thing with the heel of the blade, which those are the hardest parts to get in many cases. You can see how it's dark right here because the scratches don't go down to the apex, but on the rest of the blade, it mostly does, but it hasn't hit the tip yet and the heel. So that's the areas you wanna focus on and make sure you get. So here I drew a drawing showing the micro serration. So imagine this is zoomed in a lot. And you can see how each scratch leads down to a little micro point on the apex, making like a saw blade. So when you're sharpening and you take your stone, you wanna run it at that angle up to the tip because the diamonds, or in this case, the diamonds on the stone are what's, up, what's making the scratches. So as you do this, you wanna make sure they all run that direction. If you work on a part right here, you wanna blend it in. When you're sharpening, it's gonna look like that, where you start at the heel, move your way to the tip, now, if you work in an area where you go a different direction like this, I'm going straight up and down right now. If I do, whatever I do, I have to triple the amount of blending in passes. So if I do this three times, well then I need to blend it in at least nine strokes. So pay attention to that because otherwise what'll happen is your scratches will be going a different direction than you want. That's one thing. But then also more steel will be removed in one area, making the angle slightly different from here to here because this is a little bit different. So blend it all in. Every time you work in an area, wherever it is, blend that in. Triple the amount of passes you did working on it. So don't work in one area too long without blending it in. Only a few passes, blend it in, few passes, blend it in, because otherwise you'll get ahead of yourself and it'll be very difficult to blend it in. Now, the third thing, the third tip is 
The heel and the tip. This is the most important thing that you need to pay attention to because it's gonna be the most difficult thing that you're gonna run into many times over. So when you are working on most, most blades, the heel and the tip is going to be the area that's last to get hit. It's just the way it is. So you'll see your edge will be perfectly fine for the whole, th all the way through the belly, but the heel, your, your scratch pattern will not reach the apex. Same thing with the tip. So you're just gonna have to keep working on it until. Now there is cases where you should, if it's, if there's misgrinds or anything like that or pitting maybe in the blade, you might want to just get it on the next sharpening if it's taking too long because you don't want to remove too much life from your edge. And a professional will not remove all that life, three years of life from an edge just to make sure the tip is perfect. So in some cases, you're gonna want to maybe just do what you can with the first sharpening and get the heel and the tip or get that area wherever it is then on the next sharpening. It's not gonna affect your cutting performance very much. Okay, so the tip. We have to make sure when we are doing a pass that we stop at the tip. Do not let the tip go past the center of the stone. And in a lot of cases, just let it, where the, right when the stone hits the tip, stop it there. Because what'll happen is if you let the stone go any farther, it will round the tip over. And it, it's very easy to do this. Almost everybody who starts off sharpening runs into this issue. You have to stop the stone. Now, it might feel like you're stopping a little early, but you're not. And just keep on working on it until the scratch pattern, you know, blends all in at the tip. Now, when you're doing it, if you're in a position to where you can't see the tip really good without bending your neck all over, pay attention, find where, where it hits the tip or where it's just past the tip and pay attention where this side of the stone lands. That way you can just watch this side of the stone and see right where to stop it. So this is the tip of the knife. When you're sharpening, make sure the stone just gets to the tip and barely passes it. Do not let the tip go past the center of the stone. Otherwise, it'll fall off like that. It'll roll over and it'll roll your tip. So in order to get a perfect tip that looks really nice, that's nice and acute, make sure you stop your stone as soon as it hits it. Now an extra tip, if you are trying to get a mirror polish, then you need to make sure that you, you go through your beginning stones and your medium grit stones and spend the most time with those. So your first stone, when you're laying your, um, your edge bevel and you're applying your edge bevel, after you're done with your first stone, that's gonna be the deepest scratches. So you need to remove the deepest scratches with the next stone. But a lot of people won't spend as much time because they'll get a burr, so then they'll just flip it. Don't, don't pay attention to the burr and how fast it becomes a burr. Make sure your scratch pattern is replaced with the new finer grit scratch pattern. Same thing with the next stone and the next stone. That way when you get to your ultra fine stones, your polishing stones, they will actually polish your edge because each stone diminished the deep scratches to minimal scratches so the minimal scratches are easier to get out. But even a mere polished edge microscopically will still have the micro serrations because the scratches are just very fine and very difficult to see and make a mirrored effect, but they're still there. Just not as pronounced. Anytime you get the burr and you flip in order to do the other side, make sure you do a pass from tip to heel, basically a reverse pass, in order to flip the burr over to the other side so you don't just tear it off. Because you could pull out um, very micro little serrations on the edge, making the edge maybe a little bit weaker. That way your apex is nice and clean and you don't have any little micro tear outs. When you're on your final stone and you're ready to do a burr removal, you're on your final burr, make sure 
if it's a big burr that you flip it over, flip the knife over, and create a new burr on the other side. Never let your burr be too large. You wanna try to do burr removals with a minimal burr. When you're in the beginning stages, your burrs are gonna be bigger than they need to be, which is just fine. But when you get really good, try to let your burr be very small because by the time you're to your last burr, it should only take a couple passes to create a new burr because your, your scratch pattern should be um, on the entire bevel from heel to tip, from the top of the bevel to the apex already. So only a few passes should create a burr. When you're on your final burr and you're getting ready to remove it, make sure, and it's a minimal burr, start from the tip, kind of like stropping and do a reverse pass. Do that three to four, maybe even five times, very gently. There's no pressure involved in this. Zero pressure, just the weight of the stone. Then you flip the knife over to the other side because now the burr is over on that other side and do the exact same thing. Very soft passes. What you're doing is you're diminishing the burr. You're flipping it back and forth and popping pieces off of it gently so that it all gets removed at once and your apex is nice and clean. You're not creating more, more burr or anything like that. You're just removing it. That's why there's no pressure, very gentle from tip to heel. When your burr is 90% gone and there's barely any burr left or none at all, now you are ready to strop. This is Gunny Juice, it's a diamond emulsion. I will have it linked down in the description for you guys. Now, with stropping, this is a huge part and a huge mistake that a lot of people make. One, they overstrop, and two, they apply pressure. Do not, do not, do not apply any pressure. So, you wanna start from the tip, and work your way to the heel. Very gently, no pressure at all. Remember, you've already removed the, the burr. All you're trying to do is clean off any ex extra metal particles that could possibly be on your apex. Now, if you're trying to mirror polish your edge a little bit more with stropping, then you can go through different stropping progressions to finer grit, to finer grit, to finer grit. But if you're just doing a burr removal and it has nothing to do with polishing, then just be very gentle. A few passes on each side is all you're gonna need. You don't need to, to keep going and going and going and going. Just very gentle passes because when you push pressure, the leather will wrap around the edge, rolling it. That's why you wanna be no pressure at all. Just let the strop or the emulsion do the work. No pressure. And if you do very gentle passes, just a couple passes on each side, as long as you did a good burr removal like we talked, that should be plenty of stropping and your edge should be finished. Another quick tip is ceramic plates make sure you have them get a rod and a plate these things are like a multi-tool for knife sharpeners and they work really good at removing a burr so you can switch to your ceramic and use it to do your burr removal and it'll remove a burr very very easily and it leaves a nice clean apex i can't recommend using a ceramic enough when deburring but you can also use them for many many other things Being a perfect edge, it has no problem cutting through paper towel. There we go. Let's take a quick look at the results under the microscope. You can see the tip is hit all the way to the very tip, and you can see the scratch pattern is nice and even and consistent all the way through. You can see the scratch patterns running at an angle, very, very consistent on both sides. Let's see if we can get this other side. You can see the other side. 
Very nice.